Harrison with you, and I am sitting to next to one of the greatest superheroes on the planet. This is not some lofty encomium, but it's just a fact. What's an encomium? An encomium is a high compliment. I see. And when they're earned such as you, I mean, many of us consider you the mother of the anti-nuclear movement. Uh, many of us see anybody who stands up and pushes against power the way you have, Dr. Helen Caldicott, uh, in order to help the humans, the residents of Earth, some seven billion of us now who do not have a voice. And somebody has to stand up for us. And for so many years, you have been doing that. You now have a new book called Loving This Planet. And it's hard to imagine that people actually don't love this planet or at least politically they may not. Well, I think there are a lot of people who operate in Washington and the corporations, they don't love the planet. They love money much more. And money is now the new God in America. Well, it's been God for a long time. Um, people say they're Christians and they're all sorts of religions, but they don't really care about that. They just care about money. Money's going to destroy the earth. And the earth is finite, and the only way the economy keeps going is for people to buy and buy and buy and buy. And the resources are finite, and China's making everything now. That's why you've got no jobs here, because they've all been taken offshore by the corporations. Um, the stock market is a pure gambling system. Money changes hands by computers internationally in seconds. I think we're heading towards destruction and disaster. I see very little moral courage coming from the powers that be, including President Obama. So, I, you know, we're in a very serious position. I say as a physician, the Earth is in the intensive care unit, and we are all physicians to a dying planet. You might say you have no power, but of course you have power. One person can get up and lead the whole country like Joan or John of Arc, which is what I once did. Well, you mentioned President Obama here as candidate Obama said, you know, nuclear reactors are horrible. They're really not safe. Uh, they're not reliable. They won't even be insured by private companies. They're so unsafe. I don't think we should ever have them. And now President Obama thinks there's nothing greater in the world but even more of them. He's a corporate prostitute. So are all the people in Congress, except probably Bernie Sanders. I mean, how do you get elected? You have to raise millions of dollars so you can take out advertisements on the television and the networks made huge, huge amounts of money so you can get elected. So you are just, you're a puppet of the corporations and you have to represent them, not the people who elect you. And so the whole system stinks to high heaven. And we're heading towards disaster and destruction from global warming, from a possible nuclear war, because the weapons are still on hair trigger alert between Russia and America, and they own 97% of the nuclear weapons in the world, and they have the gall to say North Korea can't have any. Why shouldn't they? They have the gall to say Iran can't have any. Why shouldn't they? You know, because this country sets a moral example, and if you've got the most nuclear weapons in the world, you do, 10,000 or so, why shouldn't anyone else have them? You know, see not the moat in the other person's eye, look instead for the moat in your own eye. So we're at threat for from global warming. I mean, we've almost passed the tipping point now. You know, our kids don't have a future. From nuclear war that could occur tonight with people hacking into the early warning system, there are at least... A thousand legitimate hackers per day into the Pentagon. Many of them Chinese, but lots of them are young kids with, you know, ill developed frontal lobes, the males who might think it a bit of a ball to blow up the, up the planet. I'm serious. And then we've got the nuclear catastrophe from nuclear meltdowns and nuclear power stations. They're selling these things all over the world, United Arab Emirates and anyone they can sell them to. Every country who has a reactor has a bomb factory because they make plutonium, which is the raw material for nuclear weapons. So America is actively participating in lateral proliferation, which could destabilize the balance of terror and invoke a nuclear war uh, between Russia and America, because it's all computerized, and then we're dead. Harrison, with you on that <laughs> lovely note, we're talking to Dr. Helen Caldicott, who is an author of so many books talking about such a r wide range of motion of human behavior, her latest, Loving This Planet. And one of the earlier books that uh, has been a, a Bible for me uh, as a non-religious person, but if I were to have a Bible, it would be Nuclear Power is Not the Answer. We've had Fukushima meltdown, not one, not two, but it looks like three nuclear power plants, and it is conspicuous 
conspicuously missing from the mainstream, even the fringe news services in this country, as though, poof, it's all cured now. And I understand there are large plumes floating through the Pacific in this direction. It is hardly a past event. Uh, Yeah, I'm holding a symposium at the New York Academy of Medicine in a few days called The Medical and Ecological Consequences of Fukushima. And I've got the best scientists from all over the world, from Russia to talk about Chernobyl, where probably a million people have already died from that event. 40% of Europe is currently contaminated with cesium and other elements. Much of the food in Europe is radioactive. You eat radioactive food, you can't taste, smell or see it, and it takes five to 70 years to get your cancer. So we're proliferating cancer. Nuclear power is a carcinogenic industry. That's what it is. And will produce random compulsory genetic engineering for the rest of time as the genes in the eggs and sperm are mutated and passed on generation to generation. And it's, uh, it's a bomb industry because any country with a reactor can make a bomb. Or use depleted uranium to coat a bomb, such as uh, we have done in this country and the British have, where you take some, sometimes it's nuclear waste, coat a bomb, it's a heavy metal, and then it aerosolizes into millions of... Ra- no, you're talking about depleted uranium weapons, which um, are shells that are used yes. as anti-tank weapons, and they um, are 1.7 times heavier than lead, so they get great momentum. And when they hit the tank, they're pyrophoric, so 80% of them burn, turning into tiny aerosolized particles of respirable size. And the incidence of childhood cancer now in Basra, where they use them a lot, and Fallujah, is very high. And the Americans are causing cancer in the kids, and a lot of children now are being born grossly deformed, so much so that the obstetricians in Fallujah have told the mothers to stop having babies. Um... The babies are being born with no brains, single eyes, no limbs. Um, They don't know what's going to appear when they give birth. It's terrifying. And uranium-238 lasts for, well, its half-life is 4.5 billion years. So you have contaminated, and my country, Australia, the cradle of civilization forevermore, where arithmetic was developed and law and mathematics. I mean, how obscene is that? And I wrote an op-ed for the New York Times about that some years ago, and they didn't publish it. They said, we're unable to publish this. Who said they can't? Mr. Salzberger. Are we talking really about low-level nuclear war, then? What do you mean, low-level nuclear war? It is a nuclear war in, in, in Iraq and Afghanistan, and apparently Israel's been using them in, uh, against the Palestinians. Um, they use them in Bosnia. Uh, I don't know, they're using them all over, and they're selling them all over the world. So it's absolutely obscene. You don't get the explosion of a hydrogen or atomic bomb, but you pollute the, re- the food chains for the rest of time and the mother's milk and the water and the whole thing. From Hollywood, this is Harrison. We're on the West Coast right now. We're in Los Angeles, California. We do have Fukushima, and we're going to talk certainly more about loving this planet. But here we are with the after effects of Fukushima. How does the average person understand the imminency of what may be coming toward us? You should be much more concerned about San Onofre than fallout from Fukushima. Sure, you got some. And sure, your seaweed was packed with radioactive iodine from the fallout. Sure, some of the tuna caught off the west coast here contained cesium from Fukushima. Sure, there are plumes of radiation, massive plumes, moving towards you across the uh, the Pacific. But San Onofre, if they start that again, that's a ticking time bomb. There are 8 million people within 50-mile radius of San Onofre. You've got to shut that thing down because if you have a Fukushima there, you're gone. And... It's very easy for Americans to concentrate on something distant Mm -hmm. and they get hypochondriacal, you know, should I drink milk, should I do this? No, you get active and you shut down this reactor, which is so dangerous and so old. Have the guts to do it. You know, you can do it. Everyone feels so powerless. I don't know what's happened to the Americans and their initiative and their passion. Have they been lulled into by anesthetizing watching television, huh? When you watch television, your brain waves go into alpha 
wave and you sort of just almost lose consciousness and everything comes in through your neocortex lodges in your midbrain and it's there forever um television's the worst thing that ever happened the midbrain being the reptilian part yeah the uh, where the emotions are engendered and where the hippocampus is where all memories are stored so uh, it it assumes also that people really sort of understand how stuff works, and a lot of us simply don't. I mean, we had a vice presidential candidate declaring that man and dinosaur walked hand and hoof 6,000 years ago, and there wasn't one network anchor who said, well, that's simply not true. So I don't know that people understand San Onofre. Like, what does that mean if it melts down? Like, what is that? Well, the media is determining the fate of the earth. You can't educate the population without educating them through the media. I mean, I should be on TV all the time talking about the medical implications of a meltdown in San Onofre. Then people like Mr. and Mrs. Joe Sixpack would understand what would happen to their children or they'd all die of acute radiation illness with their hair falling out, vomiting and bleeding to death if San Onofre blows. You can't educate people without the media cooperating and your media is totally out to lunch and totally irresponsible. And as your great President Jefferson said, an informed democracy um, will behave in a responsible fashion. You're ill-informed. Almost all politicians are scientifically and medically illiterate. And they represent the, poli- the, the, the people from whence they are elected who are also poli- you know, scientifically and medically illiterate. It's very easy to educate people about this. I've been doing it for 42 years. As a physician, you've put together a book called Loving This Planet, and you actually take a wide view, everything from plastic bottles to all the other things that we have daily contact with, and you, for the first time for many, show us what does this stuff mean? Well, no, that's my other book, If You Love This Planet. This book, Loving This Planet, is, is, is transcripts from my radio interviews on my show, If You Love This Planet, that played on Pacifica and allied networks throughout the country. Um, and I ran it for four and a half years, and so there are 25 of the best interviews with Martin Sheehan, Lily Tomlin, Daniel Ellsberg, Ralph Nader, I mean, you know, and some of the really top scientists in the world on permafrost melting, global warming, sea level rises, nuclear power, the whole thing, and so, and using cell phones, and now there's, it's almost certain that there's a high incidence of brain cancers on the side that people use their cell phones in the brain. And children are using them, and children are terribly vulnerable to this. So, things are grim. Well, grim indeed. What about solution? Well, there are solutions to the three major problems. We can solve global warming. I mean, here we are in California, bathed in sun. Why isn't there? Why aren't there solar panels on every single building in California? Like Germany, that rains a lot. Yeah. Why are you so pathetically backward? You used to have a lot of initiative. What's happened to you? Well, because all your jobs have been sent to China and people here don't worry about global warming, they worry about making money. And that's corrupt. It's corruption. Um, We can um, put solar panels on all the parking lots. You should have electric cars that plug in and power up with solar energy and drive them home, plug into your house. There's enough wind west of the Mississippi to supply three times the energy this currently this country currently uses. Americans waste twenty five percent of the electricity they use by leaving the lights on all night. I mean you've got such a sense of entitlement in this country. How dare you? How dare you? And unless you change, the earth's had it because everyone emulates you through your ghastly television ads, you know, set up by the oil companies, the coal companies, the nuclear companies and the like. So um, nuclear power produces 20% of the electricity you use. If you save 28%, you don't need the stuff. We don't need it anyway. If you all stop using clothes dryers and hang your clothes out in the sun like we do in Australia, for God's sake, why do you use clothes dryers? Because GE makes them and they make nuclear reactors and they want you to use the electricity that they make from their carcinogenic factories to dry your clothes. That's pathetic. It's pathetic. If everyone stopped using clothes dryers, it would pretty well cancel out the energy from nuclear power. Why do people follow so blindly like lemmings towards the cliff? Because we all want to have a leader and whoever our self-appointed leader... No, it's not. It's because you don't think critically and you're a bit lazy. And how do you have a revolution in a country with people with full tummies who are comfortable? So you you can... 
They're all renewables now, ready to go. China's way ahead of you, and you can have no coal and no nuclear by 2030 and have all the renewables and you'll be fine. The people who do this will get rich. Second thing, we can abolish all nuclear weapons by Russia and America abolishing theirs, and Obama wants to do that, but you've got to support the man, as he said. And thirdly, you've got to shut down every reactor in this country. If you do that, they'll be shut down throughout the world. Have you got the guts? Well, I do, and I do appreciate the smackdown. It's been brutal, but it's important. Well, you need brutality. I'm a doctor. Yes. And if you had a, a if you were pa- if you were my patient and you smoked, I'd be I'd be brutal with you, and I would make you stop smoking. And people hate me for maybe five years after I've told them it's just a security blanket or whatever. But afterwards, they're grateful because they stopped smoking. That's the practice of preventive medicine. You have to know the truth. We have to tell patients the truth. And if they don't know that, you know, that when we have to help them through their grief and their depression and everything, so they'll take ghastly drugs to try and save them, you know, that's the practice of medicine. It is the truth. Dr. Caldicott, there's a story, and we're gonna, you've got to give a live yeah, talk in just a few moments, um, where you stood in front of the male parliament of uh, Australia and pointed out during the bombings that uh, the U.S. was practicing uh, detonating bombs in the atolls and described to them how it affected men's testicles. You actually discovered a way to reach men in a way that counts. It was in the parliament with a... The union workers, and at that time we had a very powerful union movement, which is why we've got free medical care, why our country's mostly socialistic and care for the people with our tax dollars instead of you've got a socialistic killing organisation, which is the Pentagon, uh, which spends a trillion dollars of your money and you don't have free medical care. This is not a civilised country. And it's time you all rose up and said, hey, wait a minute, this, you know, these are our rights. You part, you politicians, so you're, you are our representatives. We are your leaders. And you've got to get off your bottoms and off your couches and get away from your stupid emails and stuff and get out and use your bodies and take over, you know, very little moral courage coming from the powers that be, including President Obama. So, I, you know, we're in a very serious position. I say as a physician, the earth is in the intensive care unit, and we are all physicians to a dying planet. You might say you have no power, but of course you have power. One person can get up and lead the whole country like Joan or John of Arc, which is what I once did. Well, you mentioned President Obama here as candidate Obama said, you know, nuclear... Harrison with you, and I am sitting to next to one of the greatest superheroes on the planet. This is not some lofty encomium, but it's just a fact. What's an encomium? An encomium is a high compliment. I see. And when they're earned such as you, I mean, many of us consider you the mother of the anti-nuclear movement. Uh, many of us see anybody who stands up and pushes against power the way you have, Dr. Helen Caldicott, uh, in order to help the humans, the residents of Earth, some 7 billion of us now who do not have a voice and somebody has to stand up for us. And for so many years, you have been doing that. You now have a new book called Loving This Planet. And it's hard to imagine that people actually don't love this planet or at least politically they may not. Well, I think there are a lot of people who operate in Washington and the corporations, they don't love the planet. They love money much more. And money is now the new God in America. Well, it's been God for a long time. Um, People say they're Christians and they're all sorts of religions, but they don't really care about that. They just care about money. Money's going to destroy the earth. And the earth is finite. And the only way the economy keeps going is for people to buy and buy and buy and buy. And the resources are finite, and China's making everything now. That's why you've got no jobs here, because they've all been taken offshore by the corporations. Um, the stock market is a pure gambling system. Money changes hands by computers internationally in seconds. I think we're heading towards destruction and disaster. I see very... Reactors are horrible. They're really not safe. Uh, They're not reliable. They won't even be insured by private companies. They're so unsafe. I don't think we should ever have them. And now President Obama thinks there's nothing greater in the world but even more of them. He's a corporate prostitute. So are all the people in Congress except probably Bernie Sanders. I mean, how do you get elected? You have to raise millions of dollars so you can take out advertisements on the television and the networks made huge, huge amounts of money so you can get elected. 